Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are graphing lines from the slope-intercept form of an equation. Or in other words, y equals mx plus b. What you can expect is that we will graph a line, and then we'll practice, practice, and practice some more. Let's start off with a little bit of instruction. This is how you graph a line that is in slope-intercept form. First of all, the reason this is called slope-intercept form is because in just the way the equation's written, you are given the slope and the y-intercept. The slope is the number in front of x, so the slope of this line is 2. And the y-intercept, or the place it crosses the y-axis, is 1. And we can use those two pieces of information to graph a line in this way. First of all, I'm going to take that number 1, which I know is the y-intercept, and I'm going to put a point here along the y-axis because that is the place where this line will cross the y-axis. Next, I'm going to look at the number in front of x. That is my slope. So if I have a slope of 2, slope is equal to rise over run, so I am going to go rise of 2 and a run of 1. So that will look like this. So from my original point, I go up 2 over 1. Rise of 2, run of 1. And then I make a second point. When, you're, when you have two points, you can draw a line. And that's what we do. So the slope-intercept form of a line is great for graphing lines in that you graph the y-intercept and then you use the slope to graph a second point and then draw the line through that point. I know this was glossed over, especially the part about slope. If you do need a bit of um, a refresher or if you've never heard of slope before, then I would definitely encourage you to go check out some other videos on slope because you'll need to know how to graph slope to be able to do things moving forward. Let's graph this line. y equals x minus 2. We're going to graph it the same way we did before. Our 2, or in this case negative 2, because it includes the sign, is the y-intercept. That's where it crosses the y-axis, right there. Next is our slope. If there is no number in front of the x, that means your slope is 1. So that is written as 1 over 1, or a rise of 1, a run of 1. And then we can put our second point. We have two points, let's draw that line. There it is. And that is how quick it can go with graphing lines. Now we're going to start practicing. If you could pause the video and try and maybe put a pencil on the screen of where you feel this line would go, and then when my line appears there, you'll be able to see if it matches. All right, welcome back. Our y-intercept, 1, is located right there. That's the place where the line crosses the y-axis. Our slope, in this case, negative 1. Now, you can tell that it's a negative before the x, and we don't write the number 1 in front of variables. So this is a slope of negative 1, meaning it goes down 1 and over 1. So that would be our second point there. And that's maybe where your line should have been. Hopefully that was where your line was. Let's change our practice up a little bit. With this one, I have a line graphed. And then I have three different equations. And your job is to match the equation to the graph. Pause the recording and let me know which one you got. All right, obviously you can't let me know which one you got, but you know what I mean. For me... Whenever I do this, I'm going to look at three pieces of information. Well, two pieces of information, actually, for this. The y-intercept and the slope. So first off, let's look at the y-intercept. My y-intercept is right there. That is the number 1. That means it's either this equation or this equation. We can cancel out this other equation because this equation would cross at the point 2. That would be our y-intercept. Now let's look at slope. The slope of this line, and I'm going to show it way up here because it's out of the way a little bit, is this. That has a rise 
of negative 1 and a run of positive 2. A slope is always written as rise over run, so this is a fraction of negative 1 over 2, which is right there. This slope here is a slope of negative 2, which would be negative 2 over 1. So although it's pretty close, this one here is the only equation that matches both the y-intercept and the slope. Try this one out. What is the equation for the green line? Let's look at our y-intercept. It's 3. So that means it's either this equation or this equation. We can cancel out that equation. Not it. Our slope, if we look down here, slope is consistent throughout the line. So I can look at the slope way down here, and, and it definitely is the same as it would be up at the top. This is easier for me right now because you can see it clearly. It's not blocked out by other lines. So that's our slope. It has a rise of 2 and a run of 1. In other words, it goes up 2 and over 1. That's my slope right there. It's a slope of 2. So this is the only equation that has both the y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 2. It goes up 2 for every 1 it goes over. Let's look at a third one. Here's our final example of this type. Go ahead and match the equation to the graph. This is a little bit tricky, so make sure to take a close look at this one. Go for it. Did you pause? Are you back? Really? Did you really do it? I hope you did. Let's take a look. Our y-intercept. Boom. This one is tricky. Our y-intercept is the origin, the point zero, zero. So it's actually either this equation or this equation that has nothing written afterwards. And that makes sense if you think about it. An equation or any number, really, you wouldn't say plus zero at the end. I wouldn't say I'm 37 plus zero years old, right? I would say I'm 37 years old. We don't put on things that are extra and a waste of our time. We like to simplify when we're working with equations. So we won't write plus zero on the end, and that's important, even though that is correct. It is plus zero. Zero is our y-intercept but we won't write that. The next thing is our slope. Let's take a look at the line. I'm going to put the slope way over here. Our rise is negative 1. Our run is positive 2. So it goes down 1 for every 2. It goes to the right. If our slope is negative 1 over 2, that means it has to be this equation here. So y is equal to negative 1 half x. Now it's time for your challenge question. The most challenging of all the questions we have here because it's so simple. Um, it, the equation looks simple, which means there's information that's not really there. But we've covered all of the parts, so you should be able to graph this line, y equals x. I want you to pause the recording and try that one out. All right, let's look at this our y-intercept. We talked about this on the last question. If it's not written in, our y-intercept is zero, which means one point on this line is right there at the origin. Okay. Now let's look at the next piece of information, and that's the slope. The slope is the number in front of x. We don't write it down if it's a 1, because 1 times x is x. So if this has a slope of 1, it would go over 1, or to the right, 1, and up 1. Our rise is 1, that's the movement up and down, and our um, movement side to side is going right 1. So our next point would be here, giving us our line right there. I want to write this out here. I just thought of um, this, so I'm going to just add this in here real quick. If we were to write this equation um, out fully, it would look something like this. y is equal to 1x plus 0. 
right? If we wrote out all the parts of it, that would sort of make it helpful for us graphing. It would be y equals 1x plus 0. But we don't write it that way because it doesn't need to be that way. We don't have to say 1x because it's x times 1 is, is just x, and we don't have to add 0 on the end. But it might be helpful for us to have it that way when we're, right, when we're trying to graph it, but that is the reason kind of in what it would look like if we had the y-intercept and the slope actually written in. This is what you were asked to do today. Find the y-intercept and calculate the slope. That's it. Other than that, it's a matter of practice, practice, practice. That is how you graph a line from a slope-intercept form. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.